Hey everyone, welcome back to the Reptile Room. I told you we were going to talk about basilisks. Let's talk about basilisks. Alright everyone, welcome back to the Reptile Room. These are our trio of emerald basilisks, the plumed basilisk. Uh, Plumafrons. Uh, it, they're fantastic names. Uh, they have these sails on their back as the males over here. Uh, we'll look at him a little bit closer in a second. But the females up here look really nice. Uh, they don't have the big sails that the males are known for, but they're pretty cool in their own right. They're going to run off because they aren't, they aren't super keen to hang out with me yet, but they are getting a little bit better. The one who is on top is the one who doesn't like me the most, so she's the one we're working on the most. But the enclosure is currently a little more simplistic. If you guys look back at some of the previous videos about these guys, you'll see that we used to have a lot of plants and everything. I planted a whole ton, a few hundred dollars worth of live plants in here, and their tiny little claws just cut into the leaves, which just leads them to disintegrate over a couple of you know, weeks, and then the plants have a hard time of recovering, and even though the, the lighting, I have plenty of lights in here, we have one little tiny sad plant left. So I'm going to make the move over to all fake plants, and I'm looking for a bunch of giant fake plants as well. Uh, hit me up if you have any you want to donate to the reptile room. This girl back here is the one who behaves the most for me at this moment. But this one over here is definitely just not, not cool with it, not at all. Um, the male is doing all right. He really wants to run around a lot. So I tried to feed him, hoping that he would calm down a little bit earlier. And that doesn't really seem like it happened. Um, he likes to move a whole lot. And we'll try to pick him up here just again. So I'm going to try to hold him up like this, face the camera a little bit. He is super chill. You see, I'm not doing any pressure on him. He's not held with any pressure at all. He is super cool. All right, you buddy. So he is really awesome. He likes to eye me up and down. But again, you can just kind of turn their heads the way that they're looking, and they will lock on to where they want to go. That's how you want to end the conversation with your reptile, your training session. You just want to let them hop off nice and gracefully on their own. He's really cool. She's really cool. And this one over here, hopefully soon, hopefully soon she will be pretty cool all right uh, as well. for your basilisks so you want to have a nice big water area and we actually have a reeves turtle that's hanging out down in here sorry it's really hard for me to get both uh, but there's a reeves turtle who hangs out so that's how they get a little bit more interaction uh, keeps them entertained that turtle is really super active as well he likes to climb all over this whole 
land area. So you can see that there's a whole lot of land, they have a whole lot of climbing structure, and that's what you want. And really, I'm starting to think that this isn't quite big enough for them. Uh, so I want to go, I want to go a little bit bigger because they move around so much. They're really fast. Um, some, some interesting things with these basilisks is that they will run on water if they are scared and trying to escape. That's how they got their nickname, the Jesus Christ Lizard. Now, when he is in this water tub, he really gets a nice little, like, S pattern going on. Oh, look here. Big old chunk of shed. He really swims in an S pattern, so I'd really love to have a water area that had a whole lot of surface area, maybe only like five or six inches deep so that he can swim, so I can stack some rocks and have little islands throughout it. So we'll see if we can work on that in the coming, uh, coming months. <clears throat> but really with the basilisks, you want to give them a lot of, they want a lot of everything. They want a large water dish, they want a large... Uh, or a large vertical enclosure. They want to climb a lot. Maybe not necessarily a whole lot of huge vertical space. You could probably get away with a two foot tall enclosure as long as you had a lot of ledges and stuff, but they would ideally like to get up a lot higher. And in this enclosure, it's probably, I don't know, I'd say it's like five feet tall inside here. And I have a seven and a half foot ceiling in this room, so I think that's where I'm gonna go next so I can get some taller plants like in Ronnie's enclosure, where he also killed every single live plant I have put in there, including the giant bird of paradise. From this view, you get a little bit more of a better understanding of the whole enclosure itself, which has um, this thermostat back here, which is an Inkbird controller. It's got two channels on it, so it can control your lighting and also control uh, your humidity if you want, or you can have it do um, heat. Heat is what I meant by lighting. Lighting in my room is all controlled by analog controllers. <clears throat> these have the nice sensors, and you've seen me review these in the past. If not, go check that out. This enclosure is 52 inches wide, 36 inches deep, and just about 7 feet tall. So, you know, it's a huge enclosure. But I really want to give them a little bit more, just so I have more space to do water, really. And I don't want it to be raised off the floor anymore, just in case, you know, a plated lizard were to, I don't know, be out and about and having to go underneath it again, because I really don't want to move it. It's very heavy. So that does have a, a bioactive substrate. There are earthworms in there. There's superworms. There's dubia roaches. There's all kinds of little, little tiny soil critters running around in this thing. We do have this big water area, which is probably only like five gallons maybe, with a little pond filter, a little like five gallon hang on back filter. Nothing crazy, uh, something easy you can do with a little tote you saw, just nothing, no big deal. I really want to get the fake plants in here because the way these guys are colored with the green and the blue and the black spots and everything, that's showing how they defend themselves when they go up into plants and whatnot. So when humans are walking around or whatever predator is looking for them, they're looking up in the plant life and in the brush and whatnot, and they see this other green fixture with a little bit of, uh, you know, like blue speckling. They really just blend in super well. Uh, even sometimes in here where there are no live plants right now, I can't find them. I come down and look for them every evening so that I know for sure that they're still in here. So I just wanted to mention food uh, for these guys. So I have successfully been feeding them dubias, hornworms, superworms, mealworms. Uh, we have given them snails. We have given them tilapia. We have given them uh, salmon pieces. I have given them some fruit offerings and vegetable offerings, but I haven't really seen them I haven't seen them eat any of that, so, like, firsthand. Maybe if an insect got on it, then most likely, but I was actually watching a documentary about these guys versus uh, green iguanas in the wild, and a male basilisk ran one down, a little baby green, um, green iguana, ran it down and ate it. So these guys can eat pretty much whatever they can fit in their mouth, so... 
Um, you know, pinkies, I've, I've done pinkies, yep. So there are a lot of different foods that you can offer them and I highly recommend switching them up every once in a while so they're not just eating super worms, getting big old fat and lazy. Uh, <laughs> these guys are doing great. Um, they really enjoy their food and I try to mix up where I put it just so that they kind of look around and they love the uh, movement from the dubias and they come down and nail them super fast. So should you get these guys? Yes, you really should. So would I really recommend you get them right now? Um, you know, if you can find some captive bred ones, sure. There aren't very many captive bred basilisks right now and, um, and that's probably because they're so common to catch down in the wild. They're mostly wild caught or farm bred, whatever, whatever they want to say that's not captive bred. Um, farm bred is still wild caught technically, so you know, whatever, I guess. There's at least one guy who's doing a really good job of it that I follow on my Instagram. So go over there and check it out. Find my follower, Cask Headed. He's awesome. Check him out. So he's got some really cool colonies of more than just emeralds, but this is ours and we have had one little infertile clutch laid and I was gonna update you on it but they all molded up and they were all yellow and gross and disgusting so they were probably all unfertilized unfortunately so we're gonna see this other female is looking really chunky so we'll see if she's uh, got some eggs it's been about three or four weeks now I, they should be laying um, from what I understand they like to breed after it dries out so I dried out the room for a couple of days and now I've just taken some time to rehydrate the whole room again. I do want to upgrade their enclosure, like I said, so say subscribed and follow along with that. And also one other thing I want to talk about real quick is US Arc. So I am going to be going and making a donation to US Arc here right as soon as I'm done filming this right now just because there are some issues that are coming up where there's tegu bans and there's shipping bans for certain reptiles and uh, they're just targeting reptiles because reptiles have a bad rep and I want you guys to know that reptiles shouldn't have a bad rep and you know we gotta we gotta give all the animals equal opportunity we need to go uh, support US Arc and from now on any animal that comes out of here I'm gonna donate a dollar uh, any, anything that we uh, sell on or you, whatever, I'll just donate a dollar. I, I don't know what I'm gonna go donate right now, um, you know, so I would love to say I would donate a dollar for every subscriber up until I get a thousand subs uh, as my cat, but that's over 500, uh, it's like 540 something. So it's that's a little bit much for me to stomach right now, but um, you know, we'll see at some point in the future I'd love to do something like that. Um, you can you can go donate whatever, buy a shirt, crappy stuff, crappy stuff guys, and I would hate for that to evolve into something where there's just a ban on reptiles because then like, you know, you got a lot of people who spent a lot of time and put a lot of effort and time and money into this and uh, not even the money part, but if you're gonna make us all out to look bad then that just sucks because we're not. So it's really unfortunate and we need to stand up for it and we need to support US Arc and that's the only way to do it. There's a link down below to US Arc. You should follow them. You should check out their YouTube channel. We should support the crap out of them. Uh, donate what you can. Um, you know, yeah, I'm going to donate. I'm going to buy at least a shirt most likely. So, all right. Look, cool guys. All right. Well, after that, you know, that whole thing, uh, the reptile thing is a little bit frustrating, but these basilisks are awesome and I would highly recommend. And it looks like you guys really enjoyed my last video called So You Want an Emerald Basilisk. And I just wanted to give you guys this overall update. Um, these enclosures, you know, they look fantastic, right? They all looked good when I had them all planted up with live plants. And as much as I would love to spend all the money again on live plants, I'm just not gonna be able to do that. Uh, right now, especially with the winter, we just got all those storms and whatnot. But if you guys want to donate any of those to me, you could go, uh, uh, you know, you can help me get a whole bunch of plants, fake plants mostly, go over, become a patron, you know, it's super simple. And yeah, guys, consider subscribing. We're going to keep going over all these uh, enclosures here. And oh, oh, what's that? Oh, I don't know. So uh, yeah, guys, 
Get subscribed, stay tuned, follow along. It's Ronnie in the back. See you later. Oh, have a have a have a good uh, Valentine's Day. It's Valentine's Day weekend. See ya. See you next week.